Back in 1989, Sierra released Space Quest 3, which is probably my favorite Sierra graphical adventure game. Now, one of the things I always noticed in the setup program was that there was an option for many sound devices, including the Casio MT540. At the time, I didn't even realize this was a keyboard. I thought it was something you would install inside of your computer, much like an ad lib card. And ever since I did the video on the Roland MT32 and demonstrated it with this game, I've sort of been on the lookout for one of these so I could try it out. And so here we are, I eventually found one of these on eBay, so I snatched it up. And uh, first I want to give you a little bit of overview of the keyboard, and then we'll see if we can get Space Quest 3 working on it. Looking over the MT540, it's the same basic case construction that we've seen in a dozen other Casio keyboards of the era. In fact, it's very similar in design to the Superdrums keyboards and the Casio MT240, which I showed in previous episode as well. Now, you can see that Casio is claiming that it has a 210 sound tone bank, which I plan to demonstrate is essentially false advertising. The keyboard clearly has 20 different sounds if you look at the sound selection buttons. I'll go ahead and give you an overview of a few of these sounds. The piano doesn't sound too bad. Of course, everything on this keyboard is a PCM sample. Uh, the trouble is, there's no sustain pedal or button, so that limits what you can do. There's also no velocity detection. Also, it has these special buttons here for ambient type sound effects. Now, for example, here's Forest, and Wild West, and Ocean. So I guess you could do ambient type music like this. So let's have a look at the 210 sound button. This is really mislabeled. It should just be labeled like sound layer or something like that. Uh, basically, you start off with the current sound, such as piano. And then you push the button and the LED comes on. And then you can select an additional sound to layer. This doesn't sound too bad if you pick the right combinations. For example, piano plus strings sounds OK. But what about piano plus bass? Yeah, that sounds awful. Or worse, what about piano plus percussion? Or piano with sound effects? So how did Casio come up with the number 210 sounds? Well, you can look at it sort of like this. You can pick one sound on the left and then combine it with any of the 20 sounds on the right. And you might think you could just multiply the two together, but that results in a number of 400 combinations. So this is obviously not how they calculated it. Now, while I've noticed the keyboard will literally allow you to combine any two instruments, it doesn't make a lot of sense to combine something like piano with another piano. I've tried, you can do it, but it doesn't really sound any different. So this should be excluded from the combinations. Now the other thing is you can start with piano and then add in strings, but that's the exact same sound you'd get if you started with strings and added in piano. So again, you should exclude that. So how do we solve for this? I'm afraid we need to use math. Hi, it's me, Matt Parker, the maths guy, a big fan of Casio's, both calculators and keyboards. So we can work out the number of possible combinations or polymixes if you've got 20 different sound styles. And it's not just 20 squared to give 400, because that includes a whole load of duplicates. Allow me to explain. So if you start with piano, and you work out what you can polymix that with, you can actually join it with all 20 of them, because apparently you can have something mixed with itself. I don't make the rules, that's how it works. So piano and piano, and then piano and all the other ones. 20. Now if we do the next one, let's say jazz organ, we don't have to do all 20 again, 
because a jazz organ with a piano, apparently, it's the same as a piano with a jazz organ. They're played like it's simultaneous. You get them at once. So you don't have to count it twice. In fact, we can get rid of piano. We've done all of those. Now there's 19 things we can join jazz organ with. We've now covered every possible combination that's got a jazz organ, so that can go. Pick the next one, there's 18. Next one, there's 17. All the way down to the last one, paired with itself, one. So we've got 20 plus 19 plus 18 plus all the way down. You add them together, you get 210. That's the number of possible polymixes. Although actually we can visualize that in a way better way because squaring it to get 400, that could be an actual square. So the diagonal, they're the ones which is the same thing joined with itself. And then the two sides, each one's a duplicate of the other one. So we just remove one of them, there's our 210. And you can see the columns, that's one plus two plus three plus four. You can see them all stacked up because that's mathematics for you. If it's the same logic behind the scenes, despite different working out, you get the same answer. And that's why we call these numbers triangle numbers because you can arrange them as a triangle. There you are, 210, two different ways. And as a bonus, um, this is just a bit of interest. You might have noticed 210, if you're into combinatorics, that's actually 21 choose two. And that's because it turns out that n choose two plus n, because we've got to add on all the extra unique ones, that's the extra uh, n where they're, they're doubled up. Um, that just happens to be uh, n plus one choose two. You can work that out and double check it by using a bunch of algebra. So there you are, that's the mathematics behind the poly mixes. Back to you, David. Also, if Casio was even being halfway honest with themselves, they would have excluded the percussion and sound effects from the voice combinations, as they are entirely useless. Running the math with this and eliminating all illegal combinations, I come up with only 136 combinations. And don't forget, you can still play the original 20 instruments by themselves, so that sort of counts for something too, right? Still, the reality is, most of the combinations are useless and sound horrible together. The entire concept is nothing but false advertising. So let's talk about the drums. Uh, there are several built-in drum patterns, much as could be expected on a keyboard like this. The chord function is a little different from similar keyboards. Pressing a single key here does nothing at all. You have to actually play a chord if you want to use a chord. If you switch to chord mode 2, it works a little different. Let me show you. And of course there's an actual instrument called percussion which I mentioned earlier and with that you can play the drums however you want. So there's that. Uh, let's look at the back. Uh, we've got power, headphones, and two MIDI ports. Unfortunately it has no line level output so if you want to record from this like I'm doing the internal speakers will shut off so you need some sort of external amplifier. Okay, so let's check out Space Quest 3 on this keyboard and then Anders Jensen is going to do a little multi-track demo for you. I decided to connect this up to my main computer. Of course, to get this to work, I first had to spend about an hour fighting with drivers to get my Roland MIDI interface to work with my Mac Mini. Once it's working, um, you should be able to press keys on the keyboard and see the MIDI lights flicker on the adapter. And to test the other direction, click this little down arrow in the MIDI setup screen and it will send random notes to your keyboard, which you should be able to hear like this. Now, I want to show you something else. I have two versions of Space Quest 3. I believe this is a later version, and notice that it does not actually have the option for the Casio MT540 at all. They've also gotten rid of the Tandy 1000 option, but oddly enough it still supports Game Blaster, which is even more obscure. But uh, here in the earlier version, you can see it supports a number of things, including the obscure IBM PC Music Feature Card, and of course the Casio Tone MT540. So that's what we're going to select. After selecting that, it tells us a six step process to prepare the keyboard for use, starting with number one, which is to connect it to MIDI, which we've already done. Step two is to power on the MT540, so I'll go ahead and do that. Step three is to switch the chord MIDI selector to MIDI, so I'll do that next. Then press the CH4 pad. Okay, done. Set both accompany volume and sound effect volume slider to maximum level. Okay, done and done. And number six is to set the main volume slider to a moderate level. Okay, I think that's moderate. Let's start it.
Okay, so for a fair comparison here, let's revisit what it sounds like on a few other devices. Okay, I think it sounds better than the PC speaker and the Tandy, but I think I prefer the AdLib and MT32 versions. Okay, well, let's have a look at a few other scenes with the Casio. Keep in mind that all of the sound effects are coming from the Casio as well. Okay, so you know it doesn't sound too bad, especially compared to the PC speaker and especially for the era that it was made in. Um, I'm not sure why Space Quest 3 supports this keyboard because I can't find any other MS-DOS programs that do. Um, it's possible that the author of the music for Space Quest 3 happened to own one of these and maybe he just thought, well, hey, you know, I've already got one of these at home, let me just compose the music for it. That's just a theory, I don't have any evidence of that, but it sounds good to me. Okay, so obviously due to the pandemic, there's no way for Anders and I to meet up, and he doesn't even own a Casio MT540, so how did he compose a demo song for you? Well, you may have noticed in the Space Quest setup that it listed the Casio MT540 or the CT460. So it turns out the CT460 is just the big brother to the MT540. It's essentially the same guts inside, but it has larger keys and the buttons are arranged a little different, but it's the same keyboard. And the same keyboard was also sold under the Honor brand name as the PSK30. Uh, the case plastics are a little different, but it's essentially the exact same keyboard. And it just so happens that Anders has the Honer version, and so he composed a song for us in his studio using that one. And here it is. And that about wraps it up. There's another little Easter egg I wanted to tell you about. Uh, if you go back to the very beginning and listen to the intro tune, it was also created with the Casio MT540. That's also courtesy of Anders Jensen and his Honor PSK30. Um, but that's it for now. So as always, stick around for the next episode and thanks for watching.